Not even close, baby. What's up, guys? Nathan here. Last week, I put out a build diary for my Ignite Pro Lift Trickster, and as always, I asked you guys to comment if you were interested in a full build guide. The response to this request was overwhelmingly positive, so I knew what I had to do. I pushed the character to endgame, killing Conquerors, Cyrus, and even 20 waves of Simulacrum with less than 10x invested. It may not be an overpowered Herald Stacking Guardian, but it's a ton of fun and I can definitely recommend this build to anyone looking to smoothly clear all content on a tiny budget. For those of you that missed my build diary, here's an overview of the character. It's a self-cast fireball trickster, scaling ignite damage and using ignite proliferation support for huge clear speed. For single target, it uses fire trap, which can easily double the build's overall DPS in ideal situations. Defensively, it's a Ghost Shroud Trickster with around 7.5k EHP, plenty of blind and evasion to spare, and insane recovery while mapping thanks to Patient Reaper and Cinder Swallow. Other than that, there's not much else to the character. The playstyle feels very similar to Essence Strain. Mapping involves clicking twice to clear several screens ahead of you, while bossing involves running in circles waiting for your target to die. The damage on a properly built character should sit at around 4 to 5 million Shaper DPS, which is more than enough for all content. But before I jump into the guide, here's a quick list of pros and cons to help you decide if this is the right build for you. Pros Fantastic clear speed Extremely budget from start to finish beginner-friendly playstyle, patient reaper while mapping feels amazing, and solid defensive layers. Cons. Only around 5 million shaper DPS, elemental ailment avoidance maps suck, no sustain while bossing, limited scaling for ultra endgame content, and fairly weak to chaos damage. Next up, let's go over the leveling trees and cluster jewels for this build. It's important to note that although this build is very cheap overall, it heavily relies on the new medium cluster jewels for the majority of its damage and efficient skill point usage. If you don't know how to craft or can't afford at least semi-decent cluster jewels, you'll find yourself sitting at level 76, missing over half your damage with no nearby nodes worth taking. We'll come back to this in a minute. To start off your leveling journey, make your way around the Shadow Start, picking up awesome nodes like Trickery, Coordination, Entropy, and Lethal Assault. Then make your way up through Growth and Decay into Written in Blood. For your first lab point, take Patient Reaper. If you can afford it, gear such as Goldrum, Tabula Rasa, Vonderloos, Loctonial Crest, and Life Sprigs will make your leveling experience much smoother. I also recommend using a Malachi's Artifice socketed with an Orb of Storms or Stormbrand with absolutely zero sources of added fire anywhere else on your gear. That, along with a three-link fire trap setup in one of your life sprigs and an elemental proliferation fireball setup in your tabula, will allow you to completely steamroll the axe. Next up, head over to the left side of the tree, picking up Heart and Soul, Arcanist's Dominion, and Firewalker. Then, head up through Cruel Preparation into Breath of Flames, as well as Elemental Overload into Explosive Impact. I don't recommend doing your second lab just yet, as your second and third ascendancy points don't carry much value on their own. As you get closer to finishing Act 10, continue to path towards the Templar's start, picking up Holy Fire, Purity of Flesh, and Divine Judgment. Head through Devotion, Holy Dominion, Discipline and Training, and into Retribution. Lastly, come back to the Shadow Start and pick up Blood Drinker. For your next two lab points, grab Ghost Dance and Escape Artist. At this point, you should be getting into maps, so it's time to start socketing in some Cluster Jewels. You'll want to start in this socket in between Avatar of Fire and Minion Instability. Your first Cluster Jewel should be a large one, ideally with 8 passive skills, 2 Jewel Sockets, and 3 beneficial notables such as Burning Bright, Smoking Remains, Widespread Destruction, Prismatic Heart, Disorienting Display, or Doriani's Lesson. Just be careful not to use Cremator as its corpse destruction can seriously mess with the overall smoothness of your map clear. In this large Cluster Jewels 2 sockets, you'll want the following. Medium Cluster Jewels with 4 or 5 passive skills, 1 Jewel Socket, and the notables Blowback and Cooked Alive. There are a few other good options here, but these two are by far the best notables at medium to higher gear levels. And for those of you worried about cost, don't worry. Not only are these jewels easily the most expensive part of this build, but I'll be going over budget versions of them when we get into gearing. For the final leg of your leveling journey, simply pick up all the two node jewel sockets littered about the tree. Once you've finished Uberlab, grab Prolonged Pain and your character is basically finished until level 95. If you want to level higher, I recommend picking up efficient energy shield nodes like Arcane Focus, Resourcefulness, and Sanctity. But if you've managed to play this build to that high of a level, then you're probably better off making up your mind on your own what nodes you'd like to take. 
For the next section of this guide, I'll be going over the gem setups that I decided to use when playing this build. As always, these are mostly recommendations and the only required setups are your main six links. But without further ado, let's move on. Your first setup should consist of Vol Fireball, Greater Multiple Projectiles, Deadly Ailments, Ignite Proliferation, Combustion, and Burning Damage. For single target, I recommend swapping GMP for Swift Affliction. This can be done in a variety of ways, but if you have the budget, a weapon swap is the fastest and smoothest way to quickly switch between mapping and bossing. Your second setup is Fire Trap, Burning Damage, Controlled Destruction, Elemental Focus, Trap and Mind Damage, and Efficacy. Even with the Swift Affliction Gem Swap, this setup will deal significantly more damage than Fireball, so be sure to always use it on stationary targets such as Shaper, Elder, or Cyrus. Your next setup is Wave of Conviction, Curse on Hit, Flammability, and Increased Duration. If you're using Awakened Curse on Hit, you should swap Increased Duration for Elemental Weakness, but due to all the negative fire resistance already in the build, this is only a minor DPS increase. The next setup is Flame Dash, Stone Golem, Second Wind, and Portal. This is a highly subjective setup, but because I felt the build needed more mobility and regen, while also having great cast speed to benefit Portal, this is what I went with. The last setup is Malevolence and Summon Skitterbots, which leaves you with two free gem slots. You could run a cast when damage taken steel skin, level some extra gems to sell, or even just an Enlightened for a more comfortably sized mana pool. Just make sure you don't accidentally support your auras in ways that increases their mana cost, as the build barely leaves you with enough mana to cast Fireball. Last but not least, let's talk about the gear. As with the gem setups, this section is flexible, and you should definitely consider checking out Fireball Tricksters on Ninja when deciding exactly how you want to invest your budget. That being said, I've broken this section down into three categories, Required, Recommended, and Luxury. Keep in mind that the prices I use are based on the current economy, and in the unlikely scenario where this guide gets a lot of attention, they may no longer be valid. First up, we have the required gear. For less than an exalt total, you'll be able to get well into maps, start killing conquerors, and farming white and yellow master missions. Do keep in mind though, these uniques are so cheap that buying them pre-six linked might be a more efficient option than five or even four linking them yourself. A searing touch with as many links as you can afford. A restless ward with as many links as you can afford. A Malachi's artifice with as much lightning resistance as you can afford. A snake pit used in your left ring slot. An Enduring Eternal Mana Flask. Magic Flasks with the Of Staunching, Of Heat, and Of Warding suffixes. I also highly recommend a Jade Flask of Reflexes if you want to maximize your survivability. Two Medium Cluster Jewels with one Jewel Socket, one Blowback, and one other Beneficial Notable. One Large Cluster Jewel with small passive nodes that grant fire damage, eight passive skills, two jewel sockets, and as many beneficial notables as you can afford. Once again, make sure you watch out for Cremator. It can roll on both your medium and large cluster jewels in this case, and if you manage to get it, it will make your map clear suddenly feel very awkward, and your ignites just won't spread the way they're supposed to. Rare jewels with maximum life and fire damage over time multiplier. Rare gear to cap your resists, get as much life as possible, and fill in your dexterity requirements. Additionally, try to get some movement speed on your boots. Next up, we have the recommended gear. With an estimated cost of around 5 to 10 exalts, these items will allow you to comfortably farm all map tiers in the game, kill endgame bosses such as Wokegate Cyrus, and with a little luck, even take on 20 waves of Simulacrum. Today's footage mostly features gear from this category. A level 21 Fire Trap and Vol Fireball. A Cinder Swallow Flask with either regen or movement speed. Better medium cluster jewels, this time with one blowback, one cooked alive, one jewel socket, and no more than five added passive skills. A better large cluster jewel, with the same requirements as before, along with one smoking remains and one disorienting display. A warlord helmet with the mod, nearby enemies have minus 9% to fire resistance. A shaper or hunter amulet with fire damage over time multiplier on it, anointed with the piercing shots notable. This will also allow you to drop snake pit for a rare ring with life and resists. Hunter boots with the mod, ignites you inflict, deal damage faster. Shaper or hunter gloves with fire damage over time multiplier. A stingy vice to hold an abyss jewel that gives life and a chance to gain phasing on kill. Better rares with more life, damage, and movement speed. Lastly, we have the luxury gear. 
Unfortunately, there aren't a ton of fantastic ways to further scale the damage of this character, but I've done my best to come up with some options for those of you with currency to spare. The costs will vary drastically and likely demand some self-crafting, but you will see significant increases in your effective HP and damage against stationary targets. Awaken support gems for your primary six links, such as deadly ailments, burning damage, and swift affliction. Rares on top tier energy shield bases, such as Hubris Circlet, Sorcerer Boots, and Sorcerer Gloves. A dual influenced Warlord Hunter amulet with fire damage overtime multiplier and the mod plus one level of all fire skill gems. A double corrupted Restless Ward to give you plus four levels on your fire trap. An unnatural instinct jewel socketed just below Pain and Tumen. Ideally, this should be corrupted with the corrupted blood immunity, but that's a little bit ridiculous. A Watcher's Eye with mods such as Ailments dealing their damage faster, Damage Over Time Multiplier, and even Mana Gained as Extra Energy Shield if you feel like running a level 1 Clarity. And that's going to be about it for this guide. Unlike my Pyro Class guide I made a couple months ago, there's really not a lot of mechanics to this one. You just throw your Fireball, throw your Trap, debuff the enemy, and just run in circles until they're dead. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment below and I'll do my best to answer as soon as possible. I also want to give a quick shout out to all the Ignite Tricksters on PoE.Ninja, as well as in the comments on my last video, because without you guys, this build would probably have been much, much worse. Thanks to everyone for watching. My name's Nathan, and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters, Real Human, Zikarak, Squally, Zoldjan, Coda, Julia, Allen, Kepler, Sparky, Kata, Heiser, 801, Kyle, Logan, Ice Dude, Ginzink, Anonymous, Orangina, Marius, Bombfair, and Lloyd. You guys are fantastic. Thank you so much for supporting me. If anyone else is interested in joining these fine folks, you can check me out at patreon.com slash name the brother Bob. Uh, if you have a uh, Amazon Prime lane around, you can also support me by checking out my stream, which is uh, every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 2 p.m. Central Time at twitch.tv slash name the brother Bob. You know, you can use your Amazon Prime to give me like $3 a month or something. I don't know exactly how it works out, but that's always cool. And if you don't have any monies, you know, that's that's fine too. You can just join my Discord there in the bottom right hand corner. We got We got boys who just hang out and hang out in voice and play some games and, you know, show, show their pretty pictures of drops to each other. That's kind of weird. That wasn't meant to be weird, but you know, you know, items that drop from the game, that's cool. Um, or if you just want to learn more about the game, we're also uh, very keen on helping people. So that's a thing. Uh, anyway, uh, this section's been a little bit too long, but thanks for watching. Uh, bye.